Hi there. Thanks for stopping by our little shop of wonders. In this video, I'd like to show you how I completed a finish comparison of Rubio Monaco products in order to gain a final client approval on a Hickory Desk Commission. This video is not sponsored and we have no financial relationships with any vendor mentioned in this video. I ordered these samples directly from Rubio Monaco at $1.99 each with free shipping. This is a test piece of hickory that came from the same order as the rest of the hickory that will be used to make the desk. If you've worked with Rubio Monocoat's Oil Plus 2C product before, you might know that there's an accelerator that's added to it in a 3 to 1 ratio. That is not necessary for these samples and they are ready to use right out of the pouch. For this particular comparison, I'll be looking at the charcoal, black, and chocolate colors offered by Rubio Monocoat. I'll be using a white scotch bright pad to apply the finish and a basic terry cloth towel to remove the excess. These sample pouches work really well and are simple to use. Rubio Monaco currently offers 55 different colors. You'll want to knead the packet a few times to mix the contents. Then you can fold the packet in half and the center seam will split and the finish will come out. My client's home is stained mostly with Minwax Jacobian colored oil-based stain, and he would like this desk to match as close as possible. You can't apply Rubio Monocoat over stain because the product needs to be able to interact with the cellulose fibers of the wood directly. This is why I'm trying to color match the client's current finish. When applying Rubio Monocoat, it is not necessary to leave the finish on for an extended period of time. You can simply spread it onto the surface, let it sit for a few seconds, then wipe off the excess. Some might wonder why I wouldn't just use the same stain the customer has already used. And that's actually a fair question. In this case, I love the way the Rubio Monocoat feels after it's been applied and covered with a layer of Rubio Monocoat's maintenance wax. It's a very nice, somewhat smooth and satin finish that feels great to the touch and looks incredibly consistent. Using the maintenance wax is something my client can do from time to time to maintain the beauty and protection of the desk and keep it looking beautiful and amazing for many years. Okay, that's enough of me talking. Let's throw some finish and see what we get. I'll be back just a bit later to close this out. Thanks for watching. If you find this type of content helpful, please give us a like and consider subscribing. It doesn't cost you a dime, but it sure helps me out a ton. Alright, so as you can see, there's not a lot of difference between these shades, and that's predominantly because of the species of wood that I'm working with. Hickory is very hard and doesn't take stain very well or any other color, so that's why there's such a subtle difference. But ultimately, we're going to go with the charcoal, because it most closely matches the client's coloring of the wood products that they have in their home now. So next up, we'll apply some maintenance wax, as I mentioned earlier. 
and they'll finish this out and see what it looks like. So there you have it. Three different finish colors applied and compared. In this particular case, there wasn't much difference between the colors, but it did give me enough of an indication to be able to see which one most closely matches my customer's existing colors. If you follow this approach with any finish that you're working with, you are sure to get more reliable results. If woodworking is your thing, then you know the importance of finishing. It makes or breaks almost any project. Here are three simple tips to follow when working with any finish. Tip number one, experiment. Using these sample packets, for example, is a great way to see what the finish will look like on your particular product. These samples are affordable, and super simple to use. Tip number two, surface prep. Making sure that your surface is properly sanded and cleaned prior to applying any finish will help ensure that the product performs the way you expect it to. Tip number three, finish prep. Making sure that you've prepared the finish in accordance with the vendor's guidance is crucial. Don't just add some of column A and some of column B and expect that things will go well. Use measuring tools and follow the instructions for more predictable results. If you've watched this video this far, here's my super pro tip that's taken me a lifetime to realize and try to put into practice. Don't rush. Rushing through any woodworking project at any stage of completion can sabotage your awesome product. I'm excited to announce that we've started working on a new video series called What's in the Box. In this new series, we will explore what it takes to design and build a wooden box like this one. We hope you'll join us for that. That's it for us here at Dansby Designs. Until next time, friends, keep cutting your own groove. Peace, love, and sawdust.